Hello everybody and welcome to another Selenium Python tutorial. So what we're going to be talking about this video is the unit test framework and how that works with Selenium. Now remember that Selenium is really used the main purpose for testing websites. And in fact, if you're making large websites, you're really going to want to create these automated tests, which I'm going to be showing you here so that rather than having to manually go to the website and, you know, fill in a form or type this here or press a button, all you have to do is run a script that will tell you, yes, this website worked or no, this website did not. And that's extremely useful. That will literally save you hours, maybe even days of development time, depending on how large the website is and uh, learning a skill like like unit tests is useful just in Python in general, because this is a built in module. You can use this for any application and it's standard practice kind of in software engineering and in large development to be using automated tests or automated builds. You know, you've heard of things like circle CI uh, and stuff like that to really make sure that your code is functioning without having to manually go in there and test all the different functions, especially when you have, you know, millions of lines of code or whatever it may be. So another advantage to the way that I'm going to show you how to write Selenium code in this video is that think about if we were testing a large website that if we kept writing code like this in a procedural manner where we we're just kind of going like line by line, down by down, uh, this would get very messy, very fast. And in fact, you know, if we had to test a hundred web pages, well, this would, uh, you know, be a nightmare to have to scroll through and look for different things. So the way I'm going to show you here actually separates every component that we've kind of defined here into its own class. And it makes it really easy to, once we have this initial setup, uh, go ahead and test another page and it just, you'll understand as we get through. But the idea is that what I'm going to do here is just walk through the, uh, the code that they have on the Selenium website. So if you go to the Selenium website, this is the documentation. This is in section six, it's called page objects. And this is the way that they recommend you write the Selenium code. So rather than me trying to come up with a better example, I figured we'll just use theirs. And the reason I'm going to do this, because some of you may be like, well, why don't I just go look at the documentation is because the documentation here is very vague. And if you're a beginner, especially if you're watching this far into the videos, um, you probably, you know, would rather have me walk through and kind of explain these different aspects of the code that they don't talk about. So for example, if I come down here, you understand what set means, what get means, what about Lambda? You know, what is all of these things that we have here? Why are we importing this? Why are we inheriting from a base page? I'm going to walk through and explain how all of these different things work. So not only do you understand Selenium, but you understand the Python syntax that goes into building something like this. So I'll just be copying that, uh, but I will be, you know, slowing down, making some other examples to really hopefully make you guys understand how that works. All right. So the first thing we need to do is make a new folder. Now I'm going to call this test case. Uh, you can call it whatever you want. And inside of this folder, I'm going to put four Python files. Now it's not important that you have a new folder, but you just need these files that I'm going to make. So we're going to have main.py. We're going to have a new file called element.py. We're going to have a file called locator.py. If I could find where was the new file thing. Oh, it's all the way up here. Uh, locator.py. What's another one that we wanted? Uh, and then the last one we need, if I can find down here, is called page.py. Now, already we're noticing how things might be going here, right? So we have four files, and each of these files is going to represent a different thing, and we're going to have different parts of the web page that we're testing in each of them. Uh, this is just going to make it way easier and more organized, and you'll understand the benefit of this as we go on. So the first thing we're going to do is start coding out the main.py file. We're not going to code the entire thing, but a majority of it. We're going to start by importing unit tests. Now unit test is built into Python. You don't need to install this. It's already there. Uh, and the syntax I'm going to show you, this will apply to things that aren't Selenium as well. So this is useful just to learn unit tests if you want to do that. So next thing we're going to say from Selenium, import web driver, and then we're going to actually import that page file because we'll use it later on. So import page. So notice pages, the file I created here, uh, oops, I accidentally closed main. We'll be loading some stuff from that. Now, the next thing I want to do is create a class And this class is going to stand for the main test case that I want to perform on this website. Now you can have multiple of these classes. We're going to use one, but what this one is called is Python, oops, Python org search. Um, if I could type today, which apparently is not happening, Python org search test. Uh, or not test, sorry, just search. And then in here, we're going to inherit from unit test dot test case. Now, whenever we want to make like a new separate thing to test, like a completely different, maybe page or not even pages, like completely different function of the website, we'd likely create a new test case. Uh, but inside of here, you're going to see that we can test multiple aspects of the website from this case. Uh, it, it's hard to really explain until you see the methods, but I'll talk about when you would make a new one of these classes later on. 
Now, why are we inheriting from unit test test case? Well, essentially, this is going to give us access to some methods. Um, there's some things that are going to be inherited that we need to make this set up like a test case. And you guys are going to see that when we press a button, what's actually going to happen is this is going to run all of the tests that we've defined and give us some nice output and say test one passed, test two passed, test three failed, whatever it may be. Uh, so let's go ahead and start writing some methods inside of here. Now, the first method that we're usually going to write inside of our test case is called setup. Now you can think of this as almost like an init method, uh, but specific to test case. So essentially, whenever we call this test case, the first thing that we'll run every single time is the setup. So this is where you can put any variables you want to define, any things you need to well set up before the test case gets started. So the first thing we need is a driver. So we're going to say self.driver equals web driver dot Chrome. And then here we're going to put the path to Chrome, which I'm just going to copy from here. Now, it is worth noting that what we're going to be doing here is actually testing the Python website. So that website itself and making sure that the search function, which obviously we know works, uh, works on the website. So that's what this example is. I guess it makes sense since again, we are doing Python. Now, the next thing we're going to do is say self dot not get self dot driver dot get. And then the website that we want to test, we've seen this before, and I'm just going to copy it in from over here. But it's HTTP colon slash slash www dot Python dot work. All right, so now that we have that set up, the next method we're going to write is actually tear down. So if we write tear down and we put self in here, what this is going to do is run after this test case is finished. So think of this as like cleaning up, um, you know, once everything's done, do this. So in here, all we're going to do is say self dot driver dot close, which will close that tab. Uh, pretty straightforward. You know, this will run at the beginning. This will run at the end, everything in between. And it doesn't obviously matter where, like what order you define these methods in uh, is going to run in between that. So when we want to make a method that tests something, so it gives us an output of like pass fail, what we need to do is start this with the name test. So since we inherited from unit test dot test case, if we start uh, a method name with the keyword test underscore, no, what am I saying? Underscore uh, test in lowercase. Then we can name it whatever we want. So I can just say test uh, example because I'm just going to do an example here. And this means this method will automatically be run when we run the unit test. If I made another method though, which I can do, and I called not a uh, test like that, for example, this method will not be run automatically because it doesn't start with the word test. So that's important. I'll actually show you, like I'll prove to you. Uh, this doesn't work, so this won't print. And then inside of here, I'm just going to say print test, and then I'm actually going to assert true. Now, assert essentially says assert, like see if the condition on the right side is true. And this is going to tell us whether the test case failed or whether it passed. Uh, and each one of these little methods here will be their own tests that are going to be run from within this main test case. So they need to end or they need to have an assert inside of them to tell us whether this was true or whether this was false uh, and whether this test case failed or, or passed. Right. So essentially, if the argument on the right side of assert is true, the test case uh, passed. If it's false, it failed. So I'm actually going to just show you um, how this works so far for the unit test. We're going to just do this if underscore underscore name underscore underscore equals underscore underscore main underscore underscore. This just means if we run this module, not if it's being imported, then what we'll do is say Python or not actually sorry unit test dot main. Now, what this says is run all of the unit tests that we've defined. And since this inherit from unit tests, we know that this is a unit test. So this is going to run. So let's actually run this code. Let's see what we get. Uh, obviously, going to open the Python website. And then if we look at the output, it says ran one test in 3.132 seconds. OK, so note, notice this worked. That was fine. And this is the nice output we're getting from the test case. Now, if I decide to assert false like that and run this here, we will have to wait for this to boot up. But we can see test, wait for the output, assert false, and notice that this did not work. So ran one test in 4.862 seconds, failed, failures equals one. So that's the output we're getting, and it even tells us where it failed. So it failed at test example, and you see it says test F because we failed. So let's just make another one. And notice this not a test method was not running because it didn't start with test. Uh, so let's get rid of that. Let's make another test case. And let's show you what happens when one passes and one fails. So test example two, like that, say self. Uh, I don't need to print anything. I'll just assert true like that. So let's run this and let's have a look. 
Okay, so test F. All right, and ran two tests in 5.646 seconds. And notice failures equals one. So it says one failed. It shows us where it failed at test example. Uh, and that is kind of how that works. Now notice though that this setup, and I'll actually, I'll print inside of setup so we can show you, ran twice. So let's see this print setup. So setup, boom, we see that's in the console one time, close, and then it prints setup again. So essentially this setup method will be called every time that the uh, the test cases are run. So for each test case, setup is called once and teardown is called once. So it will boot this up, run test case one, and then tear down. Boot this up, run test case two, and then tear down. So that's kind of the procedure. That's pretty important to know actually, uh, because you have to make sure that you know you're going to be starting fresh every single time for each one of these tests. So that's how that works. Um, these are the test cases. Now I can't. We can't really do any real test cases yet. Cause we need to set some other things up, but that's the basis. So hopefully you at least understand why this is useful because we can test different components and we can see which ones passed and which ones failed with some nice output. And I mean, this is all you really need to do to get that set up. So now that we have that, the next thing we're going to do is actually set up what's called a page object. Now each page on our website, we want to actually define inside of a class so that we can access things really easily. We can check if something is correct. Um, and this is where we're going to be writing a lot of more selenium code uh, is actually inside of page. So what I'm going to do inside of page is just say class base page like that is equal to and with inheritance object. Now the inheritance object is optional. I'm just including it because that's what they have on the Selenium website. But again, you don't need that. So then here we're going to say define underscore underscore init underscore underscore self and we're going to say self dot driver like this equals driver and driver is going to be an argument here as well. So essentially when we set up a base page, and base page is going to stand for this will be the base class for all of our pages. We will need to pass it a driver. So the idea here is inside of this page file, we're going to define a class for each web page we're going to test. So say we have the home page and maybe like, you know, the search page or something like that, then we would have two classes, home page, search page, right? And we would both inherit from base page because now we've defined this uh, constructor, which will be used for both of them. And if there was any methods that we wanted both of them to have access to, we would put them inside of base page. And then since we're inheriting from base page, we would get access to that. So that's the basis of inheritance. Hopefully you guys understand basic inheritance, but the idea is if I do something like, you know, class main page and I inherit from base page, this constructor method here will be used because what this says is use the methods from base page. That's, that's what this says. So I don't need to now define an init in here because automatically by default, since I've inherited, we'll be using this initialization. So let's say class main page. Uh, what I'm going to do is actually create a method and I'm going to say is underscore title underscore matches like that. Now in here, we're going to put self and what this method is going to do is tell us if the title of the web page matches what we want it to match. So it's going to say, you know, is this true? Is this false? So we're going to return if Python in self dot driver, remember driver is that web driver that we've got from the initialization because we've inherited. So we have access to driver in self dot driver dot uh, title, I believe it is. Yeah, so that's right. So what this is going to do is just tell us whether or not the string Python is in the title of the website or the web page that this driver is currently on. So that's the method we've defined here. And we can define those kind of methods inside of these pages, right? And what we're actually going to do if we go back to uh, say main.py is if we're running a test and we'll say define, you know, test underscore title like that we do self, what we'll say is, all right, so we have page imported here. So we'll say, you know, main page equals page dot main page, we'd initialize that, and then we'd say assert main page like that dot is title matches. So this will now tell us, okay, so let's go to the main page, which is over here, and it will return if Python is in self dot driver dot title. And then here we'll say, okay, well, if that's true, this test case, you know, passed, if it was false, this failed. So that's the idea here uh, for these kind of test cases. So let's go back to page.py. I just trying to show you, you know, sequentially how we're actually doing this. Uh, so the next thing that's inside of here is the define click 
underscore go underscore button again I'm just following along with what they have in the documentation and what we're gonna do in here is say element uh, equals self dot driver dot find uh, underscore element and then here uh, we're gonna have to add something that I haven't yet defined and then we're gonna say element dot click so let me leave this blank for a second and here we're gonna put something and this is what brings me now to the next file which is locators I know this is a lot of code but we kind of have to go between all the files and write them I, I can't write them you know one at a time okay so now we have this locators file so the, the idea behind this file is any CSS selector any ID any way that we locate an element we should keep in one centralized location so that if we ever need to it's very easy to change the ID or to change the CSS selector to change some attribute uh, and we don't have to change any other aspect of the code other than this file which will be quite small so what we'll actually do in here is say from selenium dot web driver dot common dot by import by so we should remember this import from earlier and what we're going to do is create classes that represent objects that we want to find so for example class main page locator just like that this will inherit from object I'll talk about more exactly what this is in a second so we'll inherit from object and we'll say go underscore button notices this in all capitals because this is going to be a constant by dot ID and the ID is submit okay so what I've done here is I've said let's make a class that defines all of the locators for the main page so for the main page right that's the home page or whatever page it might be and if there's any attributes that's is that a zero I did oops accidentally uh, if there's any attributes on that page we want to access what we should do is define how we want to access them and what their value is so if we want to access the go button on the Python website and I'll actually I'll bring up the Python website and show you here uh, let's go python.org uh, let's you know see so the go button I guess is this so let's inspect notice that this has the ID submit so since we want to access that what we do is we say let's make a main page locators class this will have all of the locators for the stuff on the main page we will define as a constant what you know the actual element is so go button that's what we're naming it and then we access that by the ID with the value submit so that's what we do with this tuple and that's just it makes it really organized and clean and easy way to find all of our locators so the next thing we're gonna do is say class search result page locators <laughs> I know this is a bit of a mess here locators is that correct I think so and this one here from object again object is not necessary but I'll just include it and here we'll just put pass so they've done pass here um I don't know why oh, all search result locators should come here okay so we'll talk about this in a second then uh, search results page locators so the idea I think behind this is that this will actually get filled later on like we'll add stuff into this class at least that's what it's saying in the documentation a class for search result locators all search result locators should come here okay uh, so maybe they're just putting that there's a template what we'll, we'll see if we actually end up using that later on but the idea is let's say we had another page for the search results well we would put the locators for whatever it is we wanted to find inside here and again remember if you don't want to find by ID you can find by XPath, CSS selector class name name all of that fun stuff and this will just be equal to whatever that value is that you want to find okay so locator is good 